And now we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about green spaces. So Adam, take it away. Yeah, so this slide is uh, pretty near and dear to my heart. Um, uh, I had a similar journey as Audrey. My uh, um, major was actually wildlife conservation in campus. Um, and so took a little bit of a detour um, uh, with waste, but um, like we're saying, uh, everything is related. And so I want to talk a little bit just about biophilia. Um, and it is a hypothesis. Of course, it's very difficult to prove this, but it makes sense when you look at it. And when I'm speaking about um, biophilia, it's just, um, it literally translates to the love of life. And so we're talking about love of nature. Um, and so the um, hypothesis goes that we all kind of um, evolved to have an appreciation of nature and we evolved in nature. Um, when uh, early humans weren't exactly in cities with concrete all around us, um, we didn't have our own apartments or anything like that. So um, it makes sense that uh, we're very attracted to, we're very uh, familiar with and uh, we want nature around us and we want to be in nature. And so some of the ways that this looks like um, is that if you have house plants in your apartment, I have near a hundred. Um, if the background on your desktop is a mountain, um, if uh, having natural light and big windows is important to you, um, and if you just notice that you have to spend some time outside, like if it's a long day at work and you look out the window longingly, that is all support of the biophilia hypothesis that uh, nature sustains us um, and we kind of need it to be happy. And so when you're um, working and learning, um, kind of taking that biophilia hypothesis and applying it to your life uh, has a lot of really good uh, effects. So it'll, it can reduce mental fatigue, it restores focus. Um, being out in nature provides settings for experiential learning, um, especially if you're in a garden. Um, viewing plants reduces illnesses and self-reported sick leave. Um, and having those views in your dorm, um, being able to see nature leaves, leads to improved mental function. So the more that we can feed that natural part of ourselves, uh, the better it is. And everybody knows about that dark, rainy season in Seattle it can get really difficult. Um, so get a happy light, get yourself some house plants, and hope for the best. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I wanted to talk a little bit about reducing waste and enjoying the outdoors. Um, Obviously, both of those things can be extremely helpful for Adam's hypothesis, or I guess the general hypothesis. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about just using reusables. Uh, every time you use something reusable, like a cup or maybe even um, a type of stasher bag, which is different than a plastic bag, um, it can kind of give you the sense of you're putting less stress on the environment around you. Um, and you're definitely doing a really good thing when you do that. So taking time to realize that and be proud of the fact that maybe you have a special mug that you bring around um, is really important. And then I want to talk about picking up trash. Obviously, there's a lot of trash that you should not pick up that's not safe. But if you see something that is safe to pick up and you pick it up and put it in the right area, uh, that can always feel really good. Um, sometimes we don't have a lot of control about the world or what's going on around us, but you definitely can control just noticing what's around you and maybe picking it up. Um, even just doing one of that a day or a week is not only helpful for you, but helpful for the environment and the world around you. Um, and then I wanted to talk about getting thrifty. There's a lot of reasons why being thrifty makes people excited. Um, you can save money, you can find something really cool you might have not seen before. Um, a lot of times it's one of a kind things, but it also plays into that um, reuse concept and reduce, reuse, recycle. So. All of that stuff is super helpful, not only, again, for the world around you, but also just for your mental health and well-being. Um, so those are even the little things it's easy to focus on and have that help you out. Yeah, and then one more thing I wanted to add about um, thrift shopping related to the outdoors is that lots of people um, think that 
or like a barrier to good at getting outdoors is gear and how expensive it is. Um, but at least in Seattle and I know online as well, there's lots of different um, local consignment shops and uh, used gear stores out there. Um, you just have to do a little bit more digging um, and that helps to eliminate the barrier of really expensive uh, specialized gear for getting outside. And oftentimes you don't need all of that gear. You can just walk outside your front door um, yeah, and have those benefits. So yeah, it's great when you can find a good deal on a really expensive like jacket or something too. So that too, and the the thrill of the hunt. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Madeline. So um, this is coming close to the end of our prepared content. Um, we just thought it would be fun to showcase some of our favorite green spaces on campus. Um, so yeah, we just have a handful of spaces that maybe you're not aware of um, that we're going to show to you. So this is the Fritz Hedges Waterway Park, which is brand new. It just opened up down by Agua Verde and all of the um, different uh, fisheries buildings. And it's this one's near and dear to our heart because it actually exists where our old building uh, used to exist. Um, and that building, we moved out in 2015. And now there's a beautiful park where our relatively old and rundown building was. So especially when um, the weather gets nicer, this will be a really wonderful park to enjoy. Lots of great seating and they have um, kayak launching and, and all of that. Uh, next up is the UW Farm at Mercer Court. As many of you probably know, the UW Farm has plenty of, uh, has a couple different locations on campus. And then they have their main location down by the Union Bay Natural Area. But this is a great um, resource right on the edge of campus and it's close to our office. So I often detour through it when I'm walking back to the office and there's benches to sit and enjoy. Um, you can almost see the water from some of the areas um, at this site and they always have interesting things growing all year round. Um, it's surprisingly green right now, even though we're getting towards winter. So that's a neat place to check out. And then, of course, we have the Medicinal Herb Garden, which exists on a couple different sites, basically from Benson Hall all the way over to Rainier Vista. And this part of the garden is uh, my particular favorite because they have like some water plants growing and it's kind of an enclosed secret garden feeling area. Um, wonderful benches and it's right across from the Life Sciences Building. And then we have this space, which is um, just above the Medicinal Herb Garden, right next to Rainier Vista. And this is a space I didn't know about for um, until a couple of years of being on campus. And it was recently um, restored through the Society of Ecological Restoration and a couple other groups on campus. So they removed uh, invasive species and added native species. Um, and it's really special because there's actually a great blue heron rookery um, above the pathway. You just have to walk off the path a tiny bit. And if you look up, especially right now when there aren't that many leaves, you can see about a dozen different heron nests. And in the springtime, you can actually see the great blue herons coming and going from those nests because they lay their eggs there um, every year in the springtime. So it's a really special place. But I encourage you all to go check out. And this is a relatively new spot on campus. It was just restored, I think also through the um, Society of Ecological Restoration. I'm not 100% on that, but they have lots of native plants with great um, educational signage about all the different native plants, um, some neat benches. And then of course they have a habitat tree and habitat trees are really special because they provide microhabitats for all sorts of organisms. So from invertebrates that live inside the decaying wood and then woodpeckers eat those invertebrates and birds, bats and raccoons will make their home inside hollows of these dead trees. Um, so it's really special that UW uh, strives to keep some of these dead trees standing for um, all organisms to enjoy. And then we have Greed Garden, which is um, 
a grassy space with some benches and beautiful trees right next to Smith Hall, Thompson Hall, and the Hub Lawn. Um, it also kind of has a secret garden feel to it, but it's a very relaxing place to spend a couple minutes of your time. So that was the end of our um, green spaces on campus. And there, of course, there's so many more. UW has a wonderful grounds team that maintains um, all of these spaces. And uh, yeah, it's it's like living, living uh, working in a park sometimes. Um, so I encourage you all, if you are working on campus, to take some time on your breaks to get outside. And um, even if it's cold and rainy, I know it's hard to want to get out. Um, but yeah, take some time to enjoy those beautiful natural spaces. And we have an activity for you to do. Um, not right now, this would be after our presentation is finished. Um, and we will send out some more, some instructions later on as well, because I think I, because all of you had to um, sign in to join this presentation, I will be able to email the instructions to you all. Um, but we want you all to try and do some forest bathing, which we talked about on our social media um, this week. And so we want you to try and visit a green space close to your home, school, or work. And if you, if it's possible, if you feel safe to do so, try not to bring technology with you because it can just be a distraction. But of course, I understand not wanting to um, go into like a forested area without a phone sometimes. And there are a couple different things you could try doing. You could try picking up a rock, mentally put a problem on it and drop it. Um, that was proposed by Madeline. And I think that's a really neat um, idea. Uh, also, you could take five minutes to focus on each sense. So what do you hear? What do you smell? What do you see? What do you touch? I don't know what you would taste, you know, taste at your own risk, I guess. Um, or you could, you know, meditate. There's lots of guided meditations online. Um, and then also, if you do bring a phone, um, you could set an alarm on it and, uh, don't pick it up until the alarm goes off. So that's a way to try and distance yourself from your technology, but also having it with you um, for if it makes you feel safe. So, yeah. And so uh, we will mail you a neat low waste prize. Um, we have a couple different options. I think we have uh, some cotton produce bags and we also have a stasher bag, which Madeline mentioned earlier. It's like a reusable silicone bag. Um, so if you do take the time to do this activity, uh, you don't have to send us too much proof if you just send us a couple sentences about what you did or um, maybe you decided that you wanted to take a notebook with you and, and take some journal notes or maybe you did a sketch or something like that. Just send us some sort of proof that you did this activity and you got out um, and you forest bathed and and then we'd be happy to send you a low waste prize for participating with us. And you can email us at recycleatudem.edu or message us through um, social media and we would be happy to uh, see what you've done. So that is everything we have prepared. So thank you for joining us today. Um, we hope you feel relaxed and energized and ready to go for a stroll through your local green space. And now we're going to open it up for questions.